All right, welcome back to Real Cast Fishing Podcast. Your host, Glenn, with the City of Atlanta Fish Field Team, C O A F Field Team on YouTube. And this round, what we got for you? Well, it's an open discussion, ramblings. In this case, we're talking bait finesse systems or BFS fishing. Specifically, it's ultralight casting with a bait caster with little lures, light lures like the 116th ounce rooster tail, possibly the trout magnet. As well as, um, well, other light lures. <coughs> so that said, uh, let me give you some background on my experience with bait finesse systems fishing. And uh, maybe that might trigger maybe some questions, uh, maybe comments, uh, maybe some interest in, the, in this uh, technique of fishing um, for those in our audience today. So uh, first up, how I got started in bait finesse systems fishing a subscriber had mentioned try BFS fishing and when I looked it up online I checked out a few things and realized one uh, this uses a specialized bait caster it's one that can handle light line <coughs> excuse me and uh, light lures light weights and they cost a lot I mean upwards of three to four to five hundred dollars is what uh, I noticed so I kind of put that on the back burner and then uh, later on, I found out about the Casking Zephyr BFS reel. That one was under a hundred bucks. In fact, it was like seventy bucks. I think you could still get it today uh, for that price. Uh, and and that's how I got started in bait finesse systems fishing. I did see some other folks online uh, on YouTube posting different things. A uh, couple of things. Uh, one, I started out with the Casking Zephyr and was using a uh, Bass Pro Shop Microlite Featherlight or Microlite uh, rod. And this is a fiberglass one that's really bendy. And that one worked out really well with that Casking Zephyr. And so I kind of played with that one for a good while. In fact, it's right over here. Let me uh, grab it real quick. And for those that are listening on the podcast, I'll describe. It's the Bait Finesse Systems uh casking zephyr bfs reel all right it's black with some really cool looking goldish colors and it's on this micro light fiberglass rod four and a half feet um <clears throat> it's got uh four pound test maybe six pound test i think this one has six pound test and this is one that i used for a good year before i ended up buying another bass uh or bait finesse systems Real in this case, uh, the same model except it came with a real clicker. I'm not sure if this is the one with the real clicker. Let's see if I can check it real quick. No, this is the one without the real clicker. Okay, and what I'm saying there is you should hear this clicky sound when uh, you pull on it as if drag's coming out or when the drag is coming out. So let me grab that one. Okay, I almost have it here. Okay, this is the Bait Finesse Systems Casking Zephyr. And this is the one that has a real clicker. It looks exactly the same other than it has that real clicker. And I'm just going to, for those that are listening on the podcast, see if you can hear that clicky sound. Right there. That means the spool isn't turning or the, the spool is engaged and line is coming off like a normal drag but you have that clicky sound so you can hear that sound as it's going um as line is coming out as you're fighting that uh, fish because this one has four pound test uh, mono i've got a short rod on this one and this is one that i, I kind of keep handy uh in the little pickup uh, catching or being ready to catch different things uh, and what i like about this one is uh, it's handy. I uh, just grab it and go, and I'm ready to go fishing. Uh, I pretty much keep a lure on here right now. It's just a spinner. <clears throat> right now, it's just a spinner blade, uh, but I will put a a lure on there, uh, either a beetle spin, rooster tail, some some light lure. One sixteenth uh, ounce is typically what I get out of these reels. All right, and so you ask yourself, uh, why 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 get into bait finesse systems fishing? Well, it's basically just another way to cast uh, or catch a fish and cast a lure and whatnot. 
I got interested in it because well, it sounded like fun. I didn't want to get in at the, uh, that higher price $500 deal, uh, but I was able to get in for under 100 bucks, and I've been enjoying it ever since. And in fact, the addictions here, I ended up getting the one um, casking Zephyr, the second casking Zephyr, and then ended up getting a third. This one's the, let me grab it right here. This is the Shimano Scorpion 17 BFS XG for extra gear. And this one, I've used both in fresh and salt water, uh, casting light lures. One sixteenth ounce is pretty much as far as I go with these. Uh, this one has four pound test mono, and I'm using an old lightning rod, Berkeley lightning rod, four and a half foot uh, reel. It's a rod. It's actually rated for a higher weight than what uh, the can what the reel can handle. Uh, but I've been doing really well with this one, and I've I've used it. Over the course of the last couple of years, having some pretty good fun with it. And then other than that, I pretty much put it off to the side and went back to fishing different ways to include uh, fly fishing, center pin fishing, hand line fishing also. Uh, and then, oh, I just say in the last week, I uh, got wind of a, a reel that can cast trout magnets. And a trout magnet weighs basically one gram and... I was really interested in trying that. These other rods and reels, they're, they're, the combination just doesn't uh, handle that that trout magnet well. Uh, ends up kind of pulling more to the left, and I can't get enough brake or releasing the brake to, to be able to uh, get good casts with it. Uh, and then I found out about the uh, Feather Flight Kingfisher reel. All right, and let me grab that one here. Okay, it's this one. It's got the uh, color scheme of a kingfisher, so it's got orange and blue. Uh, I've got, oh, about maybe 50 turns of line of two-pound mono, and I currently have a trout magnet on there. And guess what? It does weigh about one gram, and I can cast it about 50 feet, 43 to 50 feet, no problem, without backlashing. Got to educate the thumb a little bit more, and I'm hoping to take this one out here in the next few to maybe catch a trout or two. Um, for the rod, I was initially using one of the, uh, the Bass Pro Shop Microlite, uh, but I've since, uh, got a hold of this Magic L, oops, excuse me, Magic L hand, handing, uh, rod. It's six foot. It's a, it handles one to four pound test line and lures of 1.5 to nine grams, well, handle that trout made it no problem. So I'm pretty happy with this one. In fact, I'm kind of really thinking about maybe getting another one, possibly the four and a half footer, because the six foot's nice, but when you're doing your side cast, there's a tendency to, well, maybe hit something on your <coughs> on your cast and possibly, uh, uh, possibly, well, getting that dreaded backlash. So, uh, so those are the reels that I've been using, and at this point, I. Uh, in in the in the podcast, I, I mainly just wanted to get the word out there that you can get started in bait finesse systems fishing uh, at the discount with um, other reels or some other ones that are even cheaper than the bass or the uh, the uh, casking zephyr that uh, you could get uh, into the the sport uh, no problem for definitely under hundred bucks. But uh, right now, I'm leaning toward this guy. That's my next go to ultralight reel mainly because i can i can cast these little trout magnets all right and let's see let me put that back over here all right let me grab this other one and i'll put that one out as well okay so there's a couple of things that i picked up as well to go and well check to make sure i am be able to cast uh, different lures and whatnot so uh, i made a little weight scale to compare a 1 16th ounce rooster tail because I can cast that fairly easily with the the Scorpion BFS reel, as well as uh, the casking Zephyrs. And right here, it's a little one sixteenth ounce rooster tail. And I didn't have a trout magnet. Uh, it was in on order. But I found out if you go to Walmart and pick up a size 7 split shot, the one that's reusable that has the wings on it that you can you can squeeze open and close right here. All right, and I'm just describing it. It's just a uh, uh, the casking or the uh, split shot that you can pick up from 
uh, Walmart has the wing so you can squeeze and open and close it. All right. So it takes three of these make up a one sixteenth ounce rooster tail. And so I took one of these split shots, put it on the line and cast with that cast king or correction with that kingfisher reel. And I was easily getting 50 plus feet. No problem. So uh, that at least satisfied my curiosity on the ability of that reel. And then uh, when I did get the trout magnet in, as well as the new rod, uh, I was able to take that one out. And I've gone out a couple times already out in the front doing some quick uh, field testing or lawn testing as well as at the local pond, <coughs> excuse me, and casting it. And once I get it dialed in, uh, I'm able to cast no problem with a trout magnet oh, easily 30, 40 feet, 50 feet. And uh, I should be able to hopefully catch a fish or two here hopefully soon. I've yet to catch a fish this year. Uh, that's not normal. Uh, normally, I catch a fish within the first uh, week, if not day of the year. But this year, I got sidetracked with different things. And so I'm hoping that, hey, this uh, Kingfisher ultralight casting reel um, may be able to uh, do its thing. Oh, I got a call in here. Uh, Will, baitcaster? Yes, it is a baitcaster. I'll show it here real quick. Okay, and those on the podcast, uh, we just got a, one of our viewers asking about the baitcaster. So this is it right here. Describing it, it's the... Cask or the uh, feather flight kingfisher, and I got two pound mono. I went and got the trout magnet bundle that came with some line, uh, some leader, uh, tippet material, as well as uh, the trout magnets and some floats. And right now, I just have two pound test line and directly tied to the trout magnet, and I've got it set it. Uh, about 14 on the dial here and I am casting about 40 50 feet with this thing uh, without an issue uh, the main thing I did notice though is it is quirky about the wind if the wind's blowing hard uh, in front of you you you'll have to adjust or educate your thumb more because you you will get some backlashes um, but uh, on a calm day or casting with the wind and getting that thumb educated I'm, I'm able to get it out there. So uh, hopefully tomorrow um, I may be out there with this baby, maybe catching a, the first fish of the year for yours truly. All right. So that is the newest in the Bait Finesse Systems arsenal. All right. And I am I'm very impressed with this rod. Uh, I got it off of Amazon for it. it it's listed for thirty nine ninety nine with a twenty five percent coupon. You're getting it for twenty nine ninety nine. And uh, for basically with the tax, 32 bucks, you got yourself a really good ultralight. And like, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm definitely thinking about maybe, uh, maybe getting the four and a half footer because I kind of like the shorter rod because I do a lot more side cast than overhead cast when I'm bait finesse systems fishing. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this uh, ability to cast these one gram uh, lures, which brings to uh, another thing that I'm kind of hooked in as well. So I made that scale just to, to compare what one split shot or three split shot, the one sixteenth ounce uh, rooster tail, what it took, got that dialed in. And then I found out that I can pick up one of these digital scales for uh, 10 bucks off of Amazon. It's pretty accurate. Uh, I did a real quick check and sure enough, uh, one split shot definitely makes up three uh, one sixteenth ounce uh, or one sixteenth ounce rooster tail. Uh, I did measure the trout magnet. It's coming in at one gram or point zero point nine eight. And then uh, I made one of these producer fishing flies for some fly fishing right here. And this is the one that's been uh, really killing them at the Blue Blue River up in Oklahoma for trout this past season. And I just added a little bit more weight to it, and I did it blind because I did this before the uh, scale came in but a quick check and this thing's coming in at 1.12 grams so definitely heavier than, heavier than the trout magnet so I'm really excited to be able to cast this thing with nothing else other than directly tied to the line and be able to cast it out with that with that uh, kingfisher ultralight reel let's see 
I'll give the split shot weight to try. I usually use a spinning reel for ultralight because of the casting distance limitations on bait casters. Oh yeah, yeah. The um, split shot putting in front of it um, may may work, but in the case of these BFS reels, the bait finesse systems, ultralight bait casting, uh, it's it's no need to. I was just using the split shot. Uh, mainly to see if I could cast something that weighed about the same amount as a trout magnet, which in this case, when I weighed the split shot, it came in at uh, just a little bit over a gram, and the uh, trout magnet came in at a gram. So uh, I was pretty pretty happy to find out that uh, the this this new bait finesse systems reel of mine uh, can definitely cast out there. So I'm hoping to get some live footage this time uh, of of being able to catch something with that trout magnet uh bait casting so all right uh so that's a lot of the ramblings that i have so far um it's just really an open forum here uh i just did this one on the fly i, I do have another podcast scheduled next week uh this one is going to be going over some more of the little red book of fly fishing fly fishing tips i think we're on tips 51 to 55 i think um, I'll do another one of those in the, uh, little red book of fly fishing format. So you'll actually have the screen of the book, uh, on online so you can see it. But at the same time, if you're not able to, there'll be a audio version of the podcast. So you'll be able to, uh, uh, listen in maybe if you're commuting, driving in a car and whatnot, and you can, you can listen in. Uh, hopefully I can get some of those tips out to you. But in this case, in this, um, podcast, which mainly just fishing ramblings, in this case, we're focusing more on bait finesse systems. So, uh, it is a addictive, um, case. And like I was saying earlier, I got hooked into this when someone suggested, uh, bait finesse systems fishing to give it a try. And what really got me started was being able to get into the game. For basically on hundred under under a hundred bucks, seventy bucks for the Caskings Bait Finesse Systems Zephyr uh, model, and I used an existing rod, and then I went ahead and picked up one of those Bass Pro Shop Micro Light fiberglass rods. And uh, let me grab it again. Okay, yeah, and this is the original one that I had purchased. This doesn't have the real clicker; the other one does. Uh, you do tweak it a little bit. One thing that you need to be careful with the, the the casking Zephyr is if you go with those lighter lines, in this case, I went with two pound test line on this one and as well as four pound. And I had the tendency of the line to actually slip under the spool. So I had to take that out. Uh, so that's one of the things that uh, lesson learned. And that's why I tend to go with a, a six pound test when I'm fishing these. Additionally, uh, I don't put much line on here. I think there's about maybe 60, 70 turns of line, and I've not had any problems bringing any fish uh, with that. I haven't gotten spooled yet. Um, the main reason I go with less line is this one's quirky. Uh, it's got a heavier spool, so putting less line gives you a lighter spool. And additionally, if I do get clobbered and get a backlash, I'm able to undo it fairly quickly. If not, I just take it off and put on another set uh, fairly quickly instead of losing the whole set to a to a, to a <coughs> excuse me to a backlash. So that's one of the lessons learned that I took away from the uh, casking zephyr on the real clicker version. It's exact same what feels cast same exact same as the uh, this version. Uh, it just has that cool clicky sound. Let me grab that one again. All right, I almost got it. Hey, hey here. So this one, exact same, looks the same, feels the same, uh, same same quirks. So I don't put that much line on there. And right here, here's that clicky sound. All right. So when that fish is taking the line, and I'm finding them, I can hear that clicky sound. Uh, I guess really the the more expensive one that I picked up was that. Uh, let me grab it here. This one, the Scorpion BFS XG. This one has a, a clicker also. It also has sealed bearings, uh, so you can take it out to salt water and whatnot. So I've taken this out to, to the coast and caught some speckled trout, sand trout with it. Uh, has that real clicker as well. All right, and it is a fun one. This one, 
I actually put lighter line. I could put four pound test, no problem. Probably two pound as well. Uh, this one went for <laughs> about 300 bucks. All right. I just got it on a whim. Had some gift cards back then that I could use up, and sure enough, I took advantage of it, and I was able to pick it up. Uh, it's on the old lightning rod, not rated for a a light lure or weight. Uh, so really, this is really uh, my first true bait finesse systems combo uh, rod and reel. The uh, Kingfisher along with this hand handing uh, six foot ultralight rod. Let me grab that one. Okay, and again, this is that one, Kingfisher. It's got the uh, Kingfisher color. So it's basically uh, a love-hate relationship. Either I'm good with the uh, the color scheme on there, or uh, you don't like it, so you don't like it at all, or I don't care, it casts really well. And I'm one of those that I don't care, it casts really well. Um, I can cast trout magnets. I can cast that one size 7 split shot, no problem. Uh, I'm going to play around with this little weighing scale thing that I have and see if I can find some other lures to include that producer. That weighs just a little over a gram. Uh, so a fishing fly, bait finesse systems casting. Uh, one thing I noticed about this is the handle is a little skinny, All right, which I'm okay with that. Uh, and then the finish on the rod, you can feel some bumpiness. It's not smooth. And when I look closer, there's a cross weave pattern here as well as a cross weave pattern on the upper part of the rod. I'm not used to, but hey, this baby casts. I, it's it's good. Um, like I said, I'm thinking getting the other one, the four and a half foot version. And again, it's it's coming in at thirty two bucks. Yeah, thirty or thirty nine something, twenty five percent off. 32 bucks is what I paid for. All right. Fun stuff. Okay. Um, so I, I did have some video that I posted on how I was casting with it with the split shot. I did. Uh, I've got another follow up video on the trout magnet bundle that I had put together uh, from uh, Amazon and ordering that material. And I think on the tail end of that one, I'll have a little snippet of the, the test I did today where I'm casting about. 43 plus feet with the uh, cast or the uh, Kingfisher, uh, just showing that you can do that. Uh, you can use a bait caster to cast a trout magnet. Then, um, uh, hopefully, in the next few days, uh, I'll have caught my first fish for 2024, and hopefully, it's a trout, and hopefully, it's on this uh, combo rig with that trout magnet. All right, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'm using this podcasting format, and I've got these little um uh sound effects thing here that i'm still learning so i'm, I'm just kind of play around real quick so uh what do we say about the the where is it now the kingfisher feather flight kingfisher we say yes they get the high applause high applause all right all right okay uh just kind of playing around now and then uh if for those that want to see if you can, if you have an existing bait finesse systems uh, gear already in hand and you want to just kind of do a similar test, uh, what I did was, to me, I th I would say one sixteenth ounce on my other reels, other than that Kingfisher, it should be no problem. There's the one sixteenth ounce um, rooster tail, okay, and if you can cast a one sixteenth ounce rooster tail on your on your bait caster no issue then do a quick run to walmart and pick up the their reusable split shot they call it bullet weight split shot online it's a size seven comes in a pack of 30 and it takes three of these guys to equal a 116th ounce rooster tail so this is 148th ounce so one third that 116th and the kingfisher was casting that no problem it's slightly heavier than a trout magnet, but hey, give it a try. And then uh, if if you can cast that trout magnet on your bait fisher, I, it sounds like you got yourself a real good system to go for it and uh, see if you can try catching a, a fish or two. So, uh, all right. So those are the ramblings. Uh, let's see. If uh, you guys have any questions, I am monitoring the board here to see if anyone has any questions. 
other than that, uh, I pretty much covered what I, I had. I think over the course of the next few weeks, uh, the format that I'm going to use for 2024 is uh, I've got various fishing techniques that I use, center pin fishing, fly fishing, as well as hand line fishing. I've got some hand lines that I've got. Uh, and then this bait finesse systems fishing. And I'm kind of doing a, like a little round robin going through the different things as well as just taking the opportunity uh, to use a particular technique based on, hey, there, that's what you should use for this situation. So uh, if fly fishing calls for fly fishing, well, guess what? I'll go fly fishing. Let's see, what is a trout maggot? Never heard of one. Oh, okay, cool. Um, let me Let me ground the package. Okay, uh, trout magnet is a little jig, right, right here, okay, and here's another view of the one that I have on the rod, okay, right there, right there, uh, yeah, right there, okay, so it's got a little shad dart looking lead head jig, and then it has a split tail body. The jig itself weighs 164 ounce. And then when you add the plastic body, the split tail, uh, it becomes basically one gram. And they come in different colors. I've got pink here, right there. Uh, I've got different other colors. And it comes in this pack that I picked up off of Amazon. I stopped at Cabela's and all they had were the little the little guys and I just went ahead and ordered this. It came in fairly quickly. All right, and you can fish it two ways. You can you can fish it and do a, a retrieve, just cast retrieve, cast retrieve, uh, impart some action to it with maybe some choppy motion or some twitchy motion, or you can fish it under a float and cast it out and just kind of let it kind of kind of dead drift it and shake it a little and you'll get some hits there. Um, I first learned about it <coughs> when I fished a pond over there in Prosper, Texas, when they were stocking some trout there. And there was an individual who was just tearing them up with these trout magnets. Is it a two-part lure or the jig head is what you match to the mini tube worm looking thingy? Um, let's see. It's, it's not one of those. I think they, it's this new technique they call it, the swim baits or the the strolling something technique this is just like a normal jig where you've got the jig head and then you slide on the body uh onto the uh hook portion and i use some super glue to keep it in place so it's it's not really two parts other than um it's like your normal crappy crappie jig or or other jigs that uh, i've fished hope that answered the question uh, anyways uh so over the course of the, the next few, I'll be going through different things, uh, different techniques, uh, whatever it calls for. And in the case of the bait finesse systems and ultralight casting, I'm going to measure or weigh the lures that I'm using just so that you can have an idea that, oh, that one's about the weight of a 1 16th ounce rooster tail, or that one is the weight about a trout magnet or somewhere in between. Uh, I did pick up some 132 ounce lindy jigs hair jigs uh, someone had said they give that one a try that might be one to uh, work on with some some bluegill and whatnot so I'm, i've got some of those handy too it does heavily resemble a crappie jig setup it, it it does uh the only thing i see is it has a little split tail on it let's see any issues you know uh i haven't really fished it on a river as of yet mainly just uh ponds as well as just today, I fish it over here at the little feeder creek, and I suspect that if there was heavy current, you, you may have some issues there because it is fairly light, and it'll get uh, a, a little little hard getting that lure down to, to the depth uh, where they may be lurking in that current. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I've got the scale, so I can give you a heads up as to what I'm using. Uh, I did try some super dupers as well as... There's this other spoon-style jig. 
uh, or a spoon that uh, I have that weighs, I believe, one twelfth of an ounce. And so um, I'm hoping I can give you an idea as to uh, what the capability of these, these different rod and reels can handle. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm probably going to stay heavy on the Scorpion um, BFS XG from Shimano or uh, that ca- uh, that um, Kingfisher, mainly because the Kingfisher can can handle those those one gram lures. All righty, um, okay. Uh, I think that's about it for this round. Uh, in case you have anything that may come up, uh, definitely post in the comments. I definitely look at them, and hopefully, I can get you some answers. Uh, Yours truly has the bug on big finesse system fishing, but of course I've got the bug on center pin, fly fishing, different. I got a lot of stuff that's related to fishing. As long as related to fishing and there is a means or reason for what works, uh, I tend to want to learn how to fish that way. So, all right. All for now, appreciate y'all joining today. And for those that are listening on the audio portion of it, uh, do again reach out. We're at Real Cast Fishing. Uh, real cast fishing podcast and uh, well we're having fun all right so all for now next time we'll catch you later and good luck and good fishing (laughs) 